right, so joining us today on Veteran Nation is Justin Schatz, and he runs the YouTube channel 68 Shots. Uh, Justin, you've been dealing with some interesting corruption down there in southern Michigan. Yes, sir. <laughs> so tell us, uh, give us the wave tops, because I'll, I'll tell you very quickly, my impression, I came across you with the very first video of you in your golf cart where the neighbor was attacking you, and I just started following from there, but uh, it's really spiraled into some crazy areas. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's, you know, the, the craziest part is really, I think, the... Uh, the hit and miss intermittent nature of justice and law enforcement, because on one side, <clears throat> he's recently been found guilty of three violations of the personal protection order. And so contempt of court, uh, got a 90 day suspended jail sentence ordered to anger management counseling, things like that, you know, so that part has progressed but then at the same time the day before court the local police were sitting down in front of my house stalking and harassing me and witnessing him do the same him even coming up and touching my vehicle and screaming at me and threatening me and the police officer on camera claiming he didn't see or hear anything he's looking the other way being real you know and that's for Obviously, those, you know, oh, I was looking the other way. Now, one one of the videos we highlighted, uh, we did uh, highlight the videos where you were attacked twice in one day. And uh, right. the other one that uh, for the viewers who are not uh, as familiar with your case and haven't seen my other videos on you, you had one of the police officers show up in a Batman mask. Tell us about yeah. that. It's, uh, it was after I had finally got a personal protection order awarded, which was difficult to do because literally the local police were going to court and testifying for this guy. There, I had, I had my, my, my stalker basically had like, you know, the police department at his disposal. They were coming mm -hmm. on duty in uniform to spend the day in court to testify on his behalf, you know. This was the this is the dynamic of things, and this is the law enforcement agency that I'm expected to call out for violations of this protection order. And so I called them out, uh, and again, I'm I'm taking uh, this whole time I'm naively running all this by this who is now very clearly to be who now to me is very clearly a corrupt chief prosecutor. Mm -hmm. I'm. Actually, he gave me his cell phone number to text him with, and I was actually texting him updates on the regular saying, this is what's happening, you know, mm -hmm. and getting advice from him. You know, the, the police are saying that, you know, they're going to charge me with abuse of 911 if I keep calling them kind of thing. And I'm, you know, go, I'm going, I'm going to him saying, what, what should I do? And he says, no. You keep reporting it. If it's a violation, you call in, you report it. You know, this is coming from the chief prosecutor, you know, so I'm assuming I'm doing the right thing. I think, well, maybe there's some low level officers that will eventually get, you know, called to account, you know. So I, I'm assuming I'm doing the right thing. So I call and report the next blatant violation of the protection order. And when they show up, the one of them's standing there talking to me about, you know, my, my victim's rights and things like that for, from the violation. And I look over and the sergeant is just wearing a Batman mask, which totally fits because he's wearing one of these full combat gear jumpsuit uniform kind of things. Anyways, you know, he, <laughs> you know, it was just and I, 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 look, I look over, you know, and I'm just trying to process what I'm seeing, you know, and I. I look back over at the uh, the corporal and I say, I I'm sorry, are you, are you explaining my, my victim's rights to me while this guy's mocking me wearing a Batman costume, you know? And and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, that's Sergeant Fickle. No. And he proceeded, he proceeded to wear that for the entire visit, like over an hour, over dealing with mm -hmm. the, you know. But he has he been removed uh, from duty? I have not seen him anywhere around here, but uh, as far as locals report, he's still with the department. Apparently, they're just, you know, keeping a lid on it. 
I will say this, when we highlighted your videos, there's been uh, uh, one poster uh, in particular who seems to be very offended at you and thinks that what Sergeant Fickle did was okay, and they keep coming in and trying to disparage you because I, you know, I called you a veteran because you uh, went to uh, uh, Coast Guard uh, basic training yeah. and you were, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, medically separated, correct? Well, uh, actually, I, I know my situation is probably a little rare for most people. They don't think so. But yeah, no, I've got, got just a regular, uh, an honorable discharge. Okay. And there, there's no, the, the only thing that's uh, on mine that is uh, anything different was initially I had a general discharge under honorable conditions that okay. later uh, upon that review, because I, 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 ch I challenged that. I said, well, wait a minute, you know. <laughs> I said that 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 wasn't that wasn't part of the deal because when when I was just ignorant and young at the time and and when yeah. I was you went when I was separating they said oh this is standard this is what everybody gets and then when I once I was out back into the civilian world people said no you don't want a general discharge man why did you get that and I told them you know the story of what you know my experience and they said well that's not right you shouldn't have that so I went to the VA and asked the VA about it VA checked into it. Coast Guard sent me an honorable discharge, you know, you know, you know, pen for my uniform and the whole nine. And for those who are not veterans and are not used to it uh, that are watching the show, this is actually very common. I've seen many veterans who, because of various injuries and whatnot, they get a general under honorable conditions, which is not a bad discharge. It just says you right. didn't serve the full four years of the contract. That's all it states. Right. Uh, but yeah, the VA, uh, most people, and if you're out there and you've got one of those type of discharges, I highly encourage you to uh, challenge that to the VA because in most cases, I would say about 90% of them, they go ahead and upgrade them because again, it's honorable service. Uh, but yeah, and that was the type of things people were trying to disparage your service, even though you raised your hand, like, you know, many of us all and were willing to fully serve. It's just, you know, medically, you know, that's. Oh, sir. Sure. Yeah. 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 I, I, I had no, I had no idea really, you know, what was happening. You know, <laughs> I, I was, they, they could have sent me anywhere, <laughs> you know, I, I was ready to go, but like there was a, you know, there was a technical issue and whatever. And they, they so that again, for a long time, I'm like a lot of people for a long time. I, I really kind of thought, well, since I never really went into any foreign fields or, you know, did any kind of, you know, you know, service out in Alaska on an ice cutter or something, you know, kind of deal. I thought, well, it's not really anything to mention. And, uh, I was actually at a function with some uh, old World War II vets from the Masonic Lodge, and they said that there was a thing they wanted all the veterans to stand up, and uh, I was sitting down, and I was just kind of the way I handled those things, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the old World War II veterans nudged me, and he, he says, you know, stand up, what are you sitting down for? And I, I said, oh, you know, that's, you know, it's for, vet, you know, this is, this is for, this is for y'all, it's for veterans, and he said, well, no, he says, I, I know, I know you went in. He said, stand up right now. And I, yep. I still, I tried to, you know, I was like, <laughs> no, man, I, I, don't, I didn't want to stand. Cause I felt like it was a, a, it was a, a thing where I was diminishing what they did, you know? Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he said, you know what? He said, the other guys that aren't standing up, he said, they didn't go enlist at 17. He said, they, they, didn't, they didn't go swearing and ship off and, and mm -hmm. go away. He said, you, you, you didn't, you know, you, you didn't shirk anything he said no 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 he says you, you're standing up you know and that was that was a that was a cool moment for me i gotta say i it made, it made me realize that somebody did appreciate you know what i was willing to do even though their modern technicalities precluded it you know no i'm i'm glad that you were able to come on here and clear that up because whenever i get a commenter in the the things who is trying to say things i i I like to always be right, and I'm glad to hear that what I was putting forward was correct, um, you know, based upon what little discussion you and I had had previously. Uh, and I do want to get back into um, the uh, the record of what's happened to you, not just, you know, your service record. But so I'm going to go through timeline of events, and then I'll let you uh, clarify for me if I'm wrong anywhere. 
you had gone because of this harassment that you were uh, having, and it's all based upon zoning issues because you have an easement over uh, for your dock, and this neighbor does not like that you have that easement and is trying to prevent you from utilizing it. So you went to your local supervisor, uh, your or your board of trustees. Uh, you are in Michigan, so you are allowed to open carry, and you did so open carrying. They took issue with that, claimed that because you had a sidearm, you were threatening people. They called the police on you then. They did an emergency meeting the next day, and when you showed up to that, one of the trustees, also who is a sheriff's deputy, assaulted you, and then uh, you were arrested. After you were released, then the neighbor assaulted you on the same day, and you were arrested for that as well. Do I have it all correct? Uh, pr pretty close. I think it's important to clarify that um, even though my wife is currently the township's treasurer, even before she was elected to that office, I was on the planning commission and okay. I've uh, been a local county delegate, d different things. Uh, but I've been a regular fixture at the township meetings for most of the last 15 years. And it is my regular practice to open carry. Uh, I considered it, to be honest, quite honest with you, more of a, a volunteer security kind of a, a, an issue, uh, because typically there were no officers at most of our meetings. Okay. Yeah, and, now they uh, seem to be, I've seen your videos, now they're always right. there, if at least yeah, one. Yeah, we got all the security we need now, right. <laughs> So, but I, I just think it's important to point out that, um, and I did post a video to this effect too, just, I don't even think it was a week before this event, uh, we were at a movies at the park event, all of us together with the township supervisor there in question and the clerk and the fire chief there calling me over to come at, to please get on my YouTube video while I'm open carry. Because that was back when we were all still buddies before I had called them out about, you know, political corruption. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's I literally video evidence of them having, you know, no problem with me at township functions open carrying until I had criticized them. Then it, then it became a problem. Uh, if there's one thing they don't like, it's that criticism. Uh... Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to interrupt the interview right now because we are in a Zoom meeting and they're telling me 10 minutes left. If we get kicked out, I'll just send you a new link and we'll we'll finish up the interview that way. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, it, as I've been doing my show in fighting against corruption, uh, and you've been doing it on your end, I've noticed the biggest thing that they have is they don't respond well to criticism and they definitely don't like it when we force them to be transparent oh yeah that's 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 a, that's the that's a bad combo you know we've literally it's just it's a funny thing they've been refusing to video or audio record even at these township meetings and stuff for the entire 15 years i've been around one excuse after the other you know, to me, that just seems like the easiest thing. But then again, as a Marine, I used to always tell my Marines, uh, you know, sunshine kills. It, it, sunshine is the best disinfectant. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's anyone who wants the mold to grow doesn't want the sunshine. Right. Um, now, you you were arrested twice and you were charged. Uh, tell us a little bit about I, those charges. Well, I wanted to add in one more thing there, too, sure, is sure. actually... It was at, at the township, I was assaulted and then told by the local police that I had my choice of either reporting it or going into the meeting, that if I chose to go into the public meeting, which they were trying to sneak some sneaky stuff through, mm -hmm. that if I chose to go in the meeting, that they weren't going to do anything about the guy that had just assaulted me. They were going to let him go on into the meeting as well. That's that crazy. Unless, unless I stayed out of the meeting to give them my report and let them do their investigation, that they weren't going to do anything. So I said, no, I'm going to go in the meeting and I'll give you a report after the meeting. You know, that's, that's no problem. But I'm not going to miss this public meeting. 
but in the public meeting they arrested me for whispering into my phone during the public meeting before i was ever ever able to give the report so they conveniently arrested me before i was even able to report the officer that had assaulted me mm -hmm. but then beyond that yeah i was arrested and released there at the township but then i actually had a court date that same day for the crazy neighbor golf cart attacker guy mm -hmm. for a uh, protection order and leaving that court date which the ppo was upheld and it went good forgot, yeah. leaving that court date i was actually grabbed and drug out of the courthouse for having my camera on in the courthouse which is completely legal i wasn't in the courtroom i was out mm -hmm. in, in the court we after we had left the courtroom and we were getting ready to leave i took out my camera to get a video of all the neighborhood witnesses who had come to testify for me thought it was a very nice thing you know and when i did they had a clearly set up scenario ready to go where the deputies you know cornered me corralled me then grabbed mm -hmm. me drug me out kicked my bad leg the whole way out and admit openly admitted to it on standing court it was that's the crazy part was the uh the deputy said on standing already at the preliminary in court he said that uh i claimed that i was disabled but I looked like I got around just fine to him. So when my leg wasn't moving, he just kicked it the whole way out, you know. That is crazy. Now, whatever whatever came of the charges? So a total of six charges from that day. Okay. They, they, they charged me for disturbing the peace disorderly at the township for whispering into my phone. Mm-hmm. And then for video recording legally at the courthouse, I was charged with trespass, misdemeanor trespassing, misdemeanor disorderly and disrupting, and felony resisting and obstructing an officer. And then at later when my neighbor attacked me when I got home, I was for for pushing away the attacker. I mm -hmm. was charged with assault and battery, and felony filing a false police report for reporting what happened. That and they also uh, tried to intimidate you into deleting all the videos. Correct? Oh yeah. That is just yeah, crazy. It's, it's the, the, I, I, I was arrested and kept in an interrogation room for, I believe, about five hours being threatened that, you know, if I didn't get rid of the YouTube channel, I, you know, it, it was only going to get worse for me. Now, I did see that the uh, uh, Battle Creek, because this is the Battle Creek, Battle Creek Police Department, I did yeah. see that their chief is retiring. Uh, yeah. Gone there... already. <laughs> Is there anything else that's been coming of of this? Yeah, the it's not just the uh, police chief that is mysteriously retired young and early and out of there. Uh, it's also the uh, director of the uh, internal affairs or professional standards or whatever, okay. also gone. But I, I believe that they're running in advance of a, of a covered up murder, you know, that's going to come to light. You know, they're here in our town. Very one of the local law enforcement connected shot and killed an unarmed black man in front of hundreds of witnesses downtown wow. and was never charged. Wasn't arrested. Mm -hmm. No breathalyzer. Wow. Just, you know, oh, buddy, why, why don't you go home and you know, you've had a stressful night after killing a man. I notice, uh, yeah, as I've been going through watching a lot of different people who are standing up for their rights, uh, just videos much how I stumbled upon yours. I'm noticing that wherever there's a problem, they seem to fester. You know, it's it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's never just one case. It's always, there's multiple, multiple people involved, people covering up for each other. Um, I always it, tell people. Okay, so that's the end of part one of our interview with Mr. Justin Schatz of the YouTube channel 68 Shots with two T's. So don't forget that. 
But uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, comment on this video and on his. Really help us out with the algorithm. And uh, stay tuned. We will have part two out in the next several days. And as always, thank you for being worth serving.